Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us. Uh, this session is dedicated to a special discussion regarding um, opportunities and challenges for future and innovative new mo models for managing neurosurgical practices. Our guest is Dr. Don Kim. He really has done a spectacular job jumpstarting the neurosurgery department at the University of Texas, Houston, and Missioner uh, Neuroscience Institute. Uh, I'm very happy to have him with us today. He's going to talk to us about how he has been able to excel his neurosurgery department in our challenging times. Dong, thanks again, and please go ahead. Thank you, Aaron, for the opportunity and the introduction. I think that all of us who practice neurosurgery today know that we are under stress. The Reimbursements have been declining in real dollar terms. If you factor in inflation, that's even worse. Regulatory requirements are increasing. Compensatory mechanisms are really reaching its limits. Many of us have done more volume as the revenue per case has declined, and we have practices that probably cannot reach any larger in size. Further, the implementation of the Affordable Care Act will have a significant impact in ways that we may not even be able to predict today. These changes are affecting every type of practice. If you're in a small private practice, there are questions as to whether you can do contracting well, how do you meet the regulatory requirements. If you're in a group practice, there are questions of whether you're subsidizing other types of specialty physicians or primary care doctors. In academic practices, there are questions of subsidizing research and teaching. In my institution, which is a state medical school, uh, the state support has been declining. And as a result, many more of us are uh, becoming employed directly by hospitals. And by employment, I don't mean like a faculty member who has an employment contract, but a, a neurosurgeon who is employed by a hospital system to provide services. The questions we might ask about that is, is this what we want and how much autonomy do we have? In this presentation, I'm hoping to present some ideas to you that might be helpful in thinking about what you are going to do going forward. And I am going to start with the following premises. I think first, we all went into medicine to be physicians and surgeons, and we have to put our patients first. For our livelihoods and for the health of our specialty, I'm going to submit to you that we cannot just live off of the professional fees in the future. We are going to have, have to have other sources of income the healthcare system is going to change dramatically, and we're going to have to adapt to it. And from my own belief, we as neurosurgeons know best how to treat our patients and know best how we should practice and manage ourselves. And I would submit to you that maintaining autonomy is fairly important. So what are the possible solutions? I think the first thing is that depending on your region or city or location of practice, the situation is going to be different. There are three major variables. What kind of physician groups are there? How are they organized? What kind of hospitals? How many hospital systems? And what kind of payers? I'm going to talk to you in some detail about Houston, but this is quite variable. There are certain areas where there's only one physician that can provide a service, like in a rural area. There are some states with one major insurance company, and so on. And there are exceptions that I've noted. And for you to think about what strategy will work best for you, you're going to have to take account the variables in your region. So this is uh, the Texas Medical Center with downtown Houston in the background. I'm going to talk to you specifically about my experience at the University of Texas and within the Memorial Hermann Hospital. And in Houston, there are many small physician practices. And interestingly enough, the average physician practice size in Houston is 